Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and I thank you, Lord, that we can partake of communion together as a family this morning. I thank you, Lord, for your love and your faithfulness to each and every person here, Lord. And Father, may your love for us and your faithfulness to us be in our heart towards you also and towards one another, Lord. Lord, it was the Holy Spirit who fused us together to be one body before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So do this in remembrance of me is what Jesus said. Every time you're partaking of communion, Jesus wants you to remember him, what he did for you. Isn't that the truth? Mm -hmm. And so here, we got to change. Should. I'll change it. I have more slides. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. And gave it to them saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the, the Lord's Supper. This is the night that, that he was betrayed. And this is just before they were going to come get him and take him to the cross. And Jesus is telling the disciples and he's telling you today that he wants you to remember his body that was given for you. When they put that body on the cross... He was bruised and he was battered for us so that we could have the healing power of God in our lives. He says this, likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, this cup of the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. And so when the blood poured out on the cross, Jesus is saying, I shed my blood for you. That was holy blood, wasn't it? Amen. Without, the, without the shedding of blood, the Bible says there's no forgiveness of sin. Jesus never sinned. And so when, when he died on that cross, he literally was our substitute. He did it for us. He did, he, Jesus <laughs> never sinned, so he didn't need to be punished. He was punished for our punishment. Right? Because the wages of sin is death. And Jesus took that death for us on the cross. John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That's who Jesus is. He is the Lamb of God. You know, there's two eternal destinies, destinations. Two, two. There's only two. There's not a third. You got heaven and you got a place called hell. Jesus, the Lamb of God, is at the middle of both destinations. He's right there in the middle, isn't he? Mm -hmm. If you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you'll, you'll live in heaven forever with God. That's a long time. Eternity is a long time. And, and, and God cleanses you and washes your sins away. You become children of God. But, it, but if a, a person on earth rejects Jesus Christ, there's no other answer for them. They will spend eternity in a place called hell. You know, God only ever sent one person to hell. You know who it was? Jesus. He sent Jesus to hell when Jesus died the death of a sinner so, so that we would never have to go there. But the Bible says if we reject Jesus Christ as, as, as God's Son and God's way to the Father, there's no other way to the Father. Without Jesus Christ, uh, people will never see God. Because He is the Son of God. He is the Lamb of God who did what? Took away the sins of the world. And so if you're out there in this world, there's a lot of self-righteous logic. You hear it all the time. The world is getting self-righteous by the second. And they got their little pet peeves and they got their little things that they do. And, and they're worried about offending everybody but a God. I, I would be worried about offending God. Let's keep him first. Amen. 
Because when it's all said and done, you're not standing before a person. You'll be standing before the, the, the Holy God. And God has given us a wonderful opportunity through His love to have this eternal life through His Son, Jesus Christ. There's no other way. There's no other way. God made it so real and so obvious that Jesus Christ is the way that if people reject it, it's because they just want to reject it or they don't understand. That's right. Do you realize that, that this book, this is God's autobiography? This is a book about God and about His love for us and, and about His Son? This book is a prophetic book. There's 2,500 prophecies. A prophecy is when God says something through a prophet thousands of years before it happens. 2,500 of them. Guess how many have been fulfilled already? 2,000. Guess how many prophecies were about Jesus Christ himself? The time that he would come and the life that he would live and how he would die and, and all these, these prophecies from 400 years to 1,500 years before Jesus even came, 300. He fulfilled them all. You know what the odds of that is happening? I heard someone that's a lot smarter than me figure it out somehow. One in 10 billion times 10 billion times 10 billion. <coughs> in other words, it couldn't happen unless someone knows the future. Well, that'd be God. That's right. And that's what God said. God says all through the Old Testament, he says, if you're God, or if your gods are, are the true God, then tell me the future. Because that's what God does. And no one could ever tell the future. God did. <clears throat> Why? Because he, he, he knows everything. He's omnipresent. When God created the, the earth and everything in it, God is outside of this creation. He's bigger than this. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you believe that he would have to be much bigger than us? See, in order for, for life to exist, you need time, you need space, and you need matter. And they're continuums. They all have to happen at the same time. God made it all happen at the same time, but he was outside. he's outside of time. He's outside of space. He's outside of matter. He's God. That's how he can tell us what's going to happen. No other religious book has that. I'm thankful that ours does. Amen. Right? Yes. Look, look at what Isaiah said. This prophecy was given was given nearly a thousand years before Jesus Christ even came. Isaiah was prophesying about what Jesus would, Jesus would do on the cross. And it says, Surely he has borne our griefs, our sicknesses, our weaknesses, and distresses. So in the Hebrew, it says, Surely he has borne our griefs. The Hebrew word, if you break that word down, it means he bore our sickness. He bore our weakness. And he bore our distress. When he went to the cross, he paid all that was put on him so that we could be delivered from that. Amen. All it takes is faith and, and, and a believing. Are you willing to believe God that, that, that Jesus Christ bore your sickness? You can get healed through communion. Just recognize and take this communion by faith and believe God for the healing that belongs to you. Because the Bible says that Jesus Christ borne our griefs. Doesn't it say that? Our sickness, our weakness, and our dis distresses. And he carried our sorrows and pains of punishment. Yet we ignorantly considered him stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God as with leprosy. In other words, they thought that all this was happening to Jesus because Jesus deserved it. No, he did it for us. Amen. Look at this. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement or needful to obtain peace and well-being was for us. For us was upon him. And with the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. This is what the word says. A lot of people have philosophies. A lot of people have their own opinions. If it doesn't line up with what the Word says, I'm not going to take it into an account. Amen. Amen? Amen? And the Bible clearly tells us the purpose of the cross right here. He bore our sickness. He bore our, our disease. 
He bore our, our transgressions and our, and our sins. The Bible says that Jesus knew no sin, but our sin was put on him. The sins of the whole world was put on Jesus when he was on that cross. He never sinned, but yet he paid the price for our sin. That's, that's how we can become right with God. That's what righteousness means, right with God. You cannot earn righteousness. You have to believe for it. And you have to understand that it's a gift. Jesus is our gift. If you could earn right standing with God, why on earth would you ever need Jesus? If you could make yourself right by things you do or don't do, why did Jesus have to do that? There's some Christians, they think that they don't need Jesus. They think because they went to church for 30 years and, and, and they got everything going on, that, that that's the way they get to heaven. That's not how you get to heaven. You get there by your faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? You can't grow in righteousness. You'll never be any more righteous than the day you said yes to Jesus Christ. So if you're in here today and you've never made a confession or a commitment to, to Jesus Christ, today you can, you can join the family of God. And immediately God will see your heart and he'll change you from the inside. You'll be born again. You'll be a new creation. Amen. If you're in here today and you know the Lord but you stumbled and you sort of went the way of the world, you can get your heart back right and just remember God will allow what your heart allows. You open your heart up to him, he'll come in and flood you and, 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 and cleanse you and, and, and get you back where you need to be. This is what God wants for us, isn't it? Look at this, Colossians 1.13. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Colossians 1.13. Who has delivered us? Jesus. Now, I didn't do good in, in English in school. I have the chairman for education. I school, I guess they're okay. But look, he has. I do know that has is past tense. Right? Mm -hmm. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. He has. Mm -hmm. You have been delivered from the power of darkness. Now, not when you get to heaven, now. Amen. He's already delivered you. Amen. He's already made you, he's already taken you and, and, and transferred you into the, into the kingdom of, of Jesus Christ, his son. Amen. You gotta live your life like that. Yes. I have been delivered from the power of darkness. Satan, you have no power over me. You have no power over my mind because the chastisement of my peace was upon Jesus on that cross. Amen. Amen. You have no power over my body to make me sick because Jesus took the sickness so that I don't have to have it. Amen. You have no power over me, Satan, to hold me in condemnation and make me feel like I'm separated from God because Jesus paid the price for my sin. There's too many Christians saying, boy, when we get to heaven, we will be delivered. No, the Bible says you're delivered now. Amen. Now, if it said that Jesus, if it says we will be delivered someday from the power of darkness, then I'll give it to you. But this is past tense. Amen. He delivered you from the power of darkness when he died on that cross and broke the, the, the curse off of your life. And you walk out that deliverance when you say yes to Jesus Christ. Amen. And you get that word in you and you get that knowledge in you and you don't let go of it. God will not fail you. Amen. The power of God will manifest in your life if you know who you are in Christ. Mm -hmm. If you walk around defeated and you think the devil's this being that has this power over you and you, there's nothing you can do about it, then, then you'll live in defeat. But if you say, I've already been delivered, devil, you know what that means? My life is none of the devil's business. My life isn't his business. He has no business in my life. He has no business even talking to me. And when he tries to talk to me, I do what Jesus did. Get behind me, Satan. That's what we all need to do, isn't it? Amen. Look at this. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. Do we have it or not? Do we have it? 
in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. Jesus came one time, one time deal, one time to pay the price for the sins of the world. He's not coming back and doing it again. And there will not be someone else coming to redo what he did. Right. We don't need a do-over. <clears throat> right. That's why Jesus is called the only begotten Son of God. The unique, special, one-of-a-kind Son of God. Only he could do what he did. He is God. He left his glory on high and, and became a human being. He was God veiled in the flesh. And at the age of 33 and a half years of age, he allowed himself to be crucified for me and for you. <clears throat> at no time did the devil overpower Jesus. The only power Satan had over Jesus is what Jesus allowed him to have. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, you have, you have no power over me unless I give it to you. He's God. But he submitted himself to the will of the Father because if he had not died on that cross, every single one of us would never make it into heaven. Because the Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags. Our righteousness. Our ability to be right on our own, in our own human way, it's like a filthy rag. You know what a filthy rag is? When you change the oil in your car and you throw it away. No good for nothing. That's not talking about God's love for us. His love for you is unconditional. But our ability to stand before a holy God on our own, we can't do it. No one can do it. At the end of the time, there's going to be a great white throne judgment where millions and billions of people are going to stand before that throne. And the Bible says to give an account for the life that they lived on their own. These are people who have rejected Jesus. And you know what's going to happen? They're all going to get thrown into the lake of fire. Because you can't approach a holy God on your own. You approach it through the righteousness of Jesus. Amen. So the world can take their self-righteousness and go somewhere else. I'm not interested in their self-righteousness. I'm interested in the righteousness of God that comes through Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm interested in what God says. What my Lord says. Not what they say. Amen? Amen. Because we have eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> For you are bought with the price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. I love that scripture. That says a lot. You were bought with the price. Can we agree with that, right? Yes. When, did, when were we bought? On the cross. Jesus redeemed us. You know, if you, like, if you have a coupon and you go to the store and you redeem the coupon, he purchased us back from the, from the power of darkness to be children of God, children of light. You were all bought with a price. Jesus was that price. Right? But look at this. Since we're bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. Why glorify God in your body? He purchased these bodies too. Some people think he just purchased my spirit. No, he purchased, purchased all of you. All of you. The whole man. Glorify God in your body. And in your spirit. Which are what? God. If your body belongs to God, Satan has no right to make it sick. We live in a fallen world and we got to come against these things and try to attack our body. But your body, does it say that your body belongs to God? Yes. Then you tell Satan to back off and take his sickness somewhere else. The Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. you got to speak it out. By your words you are justified and by your words you are condemned, the Bible says. You have to find out what the Word of God says and bring it into your, into your innermost being and let it produce faith in you. And then you must rise up. Our body, our physical body belongs to God. Right? Doesn't it say also in the Bible, present your bodies to God a living sacrifice? Holy and acceptable and well-pleasing unto Him, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. God bought all of you. 
Aren't you glad he cares enough to buy you, purchase you? What would you do if Jesus appeared? Jesus is here right now. Amen. 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 Oh, the heavenly host of angels are here right now with us. God is on your side. Amen. What would you do if Jesus came here today and he appeared in bodily form and he's going around shaking everybody's hand? Or oh, he wouldn't shake your hand. He'd give you a hug. I believe Jesus is a hugger. <laughs> giving you hugs and, and, and he's calling you by name. He's calling everybody by name and he's just giving them a hug and and, and, and then what would you do if he got to you and he's like, what's your name again? I don't know about you all, but that would devastate me if Jesus forgot my name. Good news. He's not going to forget your name. Amen. He don't forget. He's God. He knows your name. Every hair on your head is numbered. He watches over you. This is all lessons that Jesus taught. Jesus came to teach the love of the Father. He came to show us the love of the Father. They only knew the, the, the Father under a law. They didn't understand the loving Father. And Jesus said, you know, how, how important is a sparrow that, that flies? And if a sparrow falls, the Father sees it. How much more is he watching over you? How much more is the Father watching over you today, looking for you to open your heart up just a little bit more? Or how about just open your heart up wide and say, whatever it is, Lord, I, I, I am for your glory, for I was bought with the price. Yes. If, if God did not purchase you through Jesus Christ, you would belong to the devil. You would be children of wrath. He owns all those people. People say, well, no, I'm just walking the fence here. I'm just walking the line. No, the devil scoops up all the line walkers and all the fence hangers. He scoops them all up. They just don't know it. I don't want to be property of the devil. I want to be property of G-O-D. God. And I just don't want to see him as God. He is God, but I want to know him as my heavenly Father. Amen. Abba Father. That's what the Bible says he is to us. Abba Father. You know what that means? Daddy God. Mm -hmm. You can climb onto his lap and you can give him love and you can bring all your tears and all your fears and all your, all your pain and you can bring it all to Abba Father. Communion is a way that we do that. It's, it's one of the ways. As a body today, we're just going to bring it all to the Father. And we're going to do what Jesus said. We're going to remember Him today. He's our Lord. The Bible says, when we were lost in sin, Christ died for us. That's good news, isn't it? Yes. Amen. Look at this. There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. Is that a hate verse or is that a love verse? Love. It's a love verse because it's the truth. There was no, there's one God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We came from Him. He's God. Everything else is not. Right. This is truth. This is love. There's no hate in that. This is, you know what? If you want to look at God, look at the cross. That's love. This is the way, the only way to have eternal life with the Father. I took, I've chosen that way. Have you? Yes. Look at the word saved means. The word saved in the Greek is the Greek word sozo. And it means healed, delivered, rescued from darkness. To save, to keep safe and sound, to rescue from danger or destruction, to make well, to heal, to restore to health. That's what, it, when the Bible says you're saved, that's what that means. That's what it means. You've been healed. You've been delivered. You've been rescued from darkness. We just saw the other verse that we had read, it talked about the power of darkness. Remember that verse? Darkness has a power to it. We've been rescued from that power, haven't we? Mm -hmm. 
He keeps us safe and sound and rescues us from danger and destruction. Makes us well to heal and to restore to health. That's what it means to be saved. This is Romans 10, 9. It says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Remember what I said about righteousness or, 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 or to be right with God? You have to know two things about it. You have to believe for it and you have to understand that it's a gift. When it says for with the heart, it's talking about your spiritual being, the real you. Your spirit being inside. Remember, we're all three-part beings. We're first and foremost spirit beings, right? Yes. God is spirit. <clears throat> we come from the Father of spirits. I believe that every human being came out of God. He is the Father of spirits. And he puts us in our mother's womb. Amen? Yes. And so we are spirit beings. That's the part that gets born again, becomes a new creation inside. We live in a body. What you see up here is my earth suit that I live in while I'm on earth. Same, you got a earth suit too, right? And then we possess a soul. And our soul is our mind and our will and our emotions. That's what needs to be continually renewed to the word, right? And over and over and over again, because your mind doesn't get saved, it, it gets renewed. Amen? And if you're a fighter and you like to punch people in the nose before you get saved, after you get saved, you're going to have a spirit of God in you and God's going to make you born again in your spirit. And, and you might go to punch someone in the nose, but then all of a sudden you're going to feel this tug down in here. Don't hit them in the nose. <laughs> and, and, and your mind's going to be like, yeah, I read that. I read that. Never return an evil for evil. And you're going to start, your life will begin to change. See, the things you do for God are, are fruit of your salvation. It's the fruit of it. It's not the root. The root is Jesus Christ. See what I mean? We get saved and we get born again, puts a spirit in us, and then we grow up spiritually, we grow in faith, and then we start to glorify God with our lives. But that's not how we got saved. We got saved by believing in Jesus Christ. Because that's what that verse says. Look, if you confess, why do you have to confess with your mouth? By your words you are justified, and by your words you are condemned. Your words are how you release the power that God's given you and the authority. Amen. You, you speak Jesus Christ, you're speaking by the authority and the right that God gave you as a human being. You're saying, put me down for Jesus. And all of, of all the spiritual forces in the world have to respect what comes out of your mouth. Right? So if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised you from the dead, you will be saved. I don't see a 10-step program. It's a one-stepper, isn't it? Yes. Last, the last slide. <clears throat> For with the heart one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So you believe in Jesus Christ with your heart, and then you confess him with your mouth, because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And as you take this supernatural word into you, the Holy Spirit is here today to give you the faith and the ability to believe in, in, in a God you've never seen. Mm -hmm. Well, how, how do you feel about Jesus here today? Do you know that he's God's son? Do you know that he left his glory on high to die on the cross and to pay the price not only for your sin but for your healing? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Yes. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Christ isn't his last name. Christ means the anointed one. The one God sent. Do you believe in that? Do you believe that when he died on the cross, God rose him from the dead? Do you believe that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father right now? He lives. He's not in the grave. He's alive. Amen. The Bible says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me and you. That's how we can become one. Do you believe in a great God, that great salvation plan? You believe in it, and now the Bible says, but you have to. 
want to tell you something. It's not just enough just to believe that to be true. You must, you must bring Jesus into your heart in a, in a humble lordship way. You must recognize need for a Savior. And bring him in and say, Lord, I want you in my life. Before we take up communion and we're going to, I'd like for everybody to bow your head. And we are, I'm, I would like for everybody to repeat this salvation prayer after me. The whole church. If you're in here today and, and, and you have never made that decision today, it's your, it's your opportunity. As you believe in your heart, you confess the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You bring him into your heart. Let him be your Lord. What do you got to lose? What has this world ever done for you? Do you want to go where the world's going to go? Because where they're going, it's not pretty. I know a God who loves me, and I know a God who loves you. And I know a God who showed us his love through his son, Jesus Christ. And today, he is speaking through me to you to give you an opportunity to come to Jesus Christ. And to have your name written in the Lamb's book of life, and to be a child of the Most High God. Say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we believe that Jesus is your Son. We believe that Jesus is your Son. Jesus, Jesus, come into my life. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. Thank you for dying for my sins. Thank you for dying for my sins. I believe in you. I believe in you. I want you, I want you to, be my Lord. to be my Lord. And all the rest of my days. And all the rest of my days. I'll serve you to the best of my ability. I'll serve you to the best of my abilities. But I also know. But I also know that if I stumble, that if I stumble, or if I fall, or if I fall, you will be there. You will be there to pick me up. To pick me up. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I am saved. I am saved. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That always feels good. <coughs> I've been saved for years, but it still feels good. At this time, we're gonna we're gonna take up communion so if the, the gentleman can come and get communion ready, and um, <coughs> we're gonna show some. Uh, um, play some videos while they're while they're while they're getting the um, communion elements ready. This is a time. What the Bible says about communion is this: as they're passing it out, and as you're listening to the videos, this is a time to talk to God, just to stay reverence, reflect. Just just if you got areas in your life where where you need help, Jesus said, remember Him. So do this by faith and believe that God's going to help you get, get strength into your life. If you have been walking away from God instead of walking to God, get your heart right right now. Use the power of God and, and come close to God. He'll come drop nigh to you, right? Just, just, just use this moment. If you're struggling with, with sickness or things in your body, pray and thank the Lord that He is your healer. Let's just take a minute to do that as, as they pass out these offerings. Pretty awesome when Jesus says we're to always remember him. Because there's going to be times in our life where if we forget him, we're going to suffer. And we're going to go through un, un, uh, unjust suffering. And suffering that we don't even have to go through. Because Jesus took that. The Bible says that Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it so you can break it. He said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You may eat. We're going to pray. Um, let's just pray. Father, we... Thank you for the healing that comes through Jesus Christ. 
And in the name of Jesus, we appropriate that healing into all of our bodies. By his stripes, we were already healed 2,000 years ago. Healing come forth right now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now you need to thank Jesus for the healing. Are you going to go by what it seems like or what it feels like? Or are you going to go with what the Word says, what we just did right here? The Lord was speaking into my heart, and uh, I believe that uh, there's someone in here you've been believing God for, for healing for quite a while, and it's, or, or for something in your life along that line, and you just wonder, when, when is it going to manifest here? When is it going to come about? The Lord says to you, don't lose faith. And, and what He wants me to do is give you offer this book to you because what you need is a little bit more of the word in there or a lot more probably <laughs> as you as you read this it's called god's creative power for healing as you get this word in your mind and you get it down in your heart and you keep doing it you're going to see your answer and you're going to see it sooner than what you could even think it's going to happen so so who would want this book who who, who, you, who am i talking about here today that you would take this book and you would read it and you would see the manifestation Pray for it many times and you would believe in God. This is what the Lord says. Is there anyone? Okay, bro. But you have to do, do what the Holy Spirit says now. You gotta read it, right? Yes. And as you read this, there's gonna be like you might not have time to read it every day, all day, but as you read it, there's gonna be some scripture that's just gonna just hit you more than others. And they're the ones that you want to just highlight and then continue to just get, get it down inside of you. But to, to begin with, I would read the whole book the whole way through. And then I would start reading it again. And as you read it the second time through, start with the highlighting. And get the power of the word in you. Because what's the word? The word is faith. Seed, right? What's in that seed? Healing and deliverance. Was there anyone else before we move on? Anyone else? Okay, then Jesus took the cup, and the cup of the New Testament, or New Covenant, he said, this is my blood which is shed for you. Can we drink of this? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the blood that was shed for us. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, that when Jesus died on that cross, he was the spotless lamb that came to take away the sins of the world. And I thank you, Lord, that if Jesus took, if he took our sins away, then there's no more remembrance of sin in our lives. We're not perfect people. But you don't deal with us according to what Jesus took away. Your word tells us that you deal with us with love and kindness as, as children of God. You see us as born again children of God bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I thank you, Lord, that there's no condemnation to any of us in here, Lord. We have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And Lord, I thank you that is. That, that we keep our hearts open and we keep it soft and we keep it pliable before you. So that, Lord, we'll not let our, our own hearts come to the place where it convicts us and hinders our prayer. But, Lord, we'll listen to the Spirit of God inside of us. And when he says change, we'll change. When he says move, we'll move. If he says stop, we'll stop. And, Lord, forgive. Forgiveness, Lord, is important. I thank you, Lord, that as we forgive... We release that, that ugliness that, that comes with unforgiveness. We just release it out of our body. And so, Father, we, we take the opportunity right now to forgive all of those people, anyone who has hurt us or harmed us or mistreated us or, or didn't understand us or any of those things, Lord. We forgive them. We must forgive because, because you forgave us. And if we don't forgive, Lord, we'll be held prisoner by that unforgiveness. And we don't want that. So, Father, I thank you for giving us the power and the strength and the ability and the desire to just forgive and to love others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And before I close, I'm reminded of a, a, a thing that uh, 
Brother Hagen said about the Lord was trying to give him a little example about sin. And he said, he said, son, do you remember that cabin that you had in Colorado in the mountains? I believe it was Colorado. And, and Ken said, yeah, Lord, I remember that cabin very well. And, and the Lord said, describe that cabin to me. And he said, well, uh, I remember uh, Gloria and I put an addition on the cabin and for our motorcycles. We could look out the kitchen window and see the mountains. He's describing this, this cabin in perfect detail. And you know what the Lord said? He said, Ken, did you know that that cabin doesn't exist anywhere, anywhere anymore except in your mind? That's where the cabin exists now. And Ken thought about it. And, and you see, 25 years ago, they sold the cabin. And when they sold it, the new owners bulldozed the cabin over. And he said, that's how it is with, with the sins of, of my children. It doesn't exist anywhere but in their mind sometimes. They remember it. I don't remember it. It doesn't even exist with me anymore. That, that's a good word, isn't it? Amen. Remember that. God doesn't look at you like that. He looks at you through the blood of Jesus Christ. He loves you. It was his idea, his great plan to do this for you. At this time, I'm going to ask for the prayer ministers if they would come up, and we're going to close in prayer. Thank you for coming this morning. Don't forget to invite as many people as you can. Um, Sunday, next Sunday for Brother Brian Wills. He'll be here. And, and, uh, and remember, if, if you signed up for the uh, Saturday sessions, just come on out, have a good time. If you can, um, bring a notebook and a pen. Um, we are going to record the Saturday session as well. And um, The Lord's really been putting this on my heart a lot lately. And so what He puts on my heart, I tell you. We, we all should have our own faith library. We should have our key books, our key reference materials, our key CDs that we just keep in a, in a special place. You treat it like a treasure, it'll be a treasure to you. And so we can go back and just, oh, I remember, I, like Brian Wills' book. That should be in your faith library. Amen. Amen. Right? And you just go, and, and whatever, whatever resources minister to you, and, and, and we well, thank God for all of the all of the work, but you know you can have a huge library if you want to. But I think what the Lord's putting in my mind just just you know just some items that that are just minister to you on an extra level, like any of these CDs or sermons that we put out that really minister to you. Listen to it over and over and over again, and then put it in your faith library, and, and you'll always have it. You got to keep building yourself up in the Word. That's all I have. Would you rise? Please don't forget to. Sign the children's names for vacation Bible Yep, sign up for children's uh, vacation Bible school if you haven't already. We're, we're getting down to the wire here. And uh, it's going to be a great, great vacation Bible school. We're excited about it. Thank you for coming. After we pray, if you have a, needed, a need or, or uh, you'd like to talk one-on-one -on -one with them, you can do so. Just come on over here. They're here for you. They're prayer partners. You know what that means? Prayer ministers. But they're going to partner with you. They're going to show you what the word says about your situation. And they're going to believe with you. They're going to add their agreement to it. And we've been seeing a lot of, a lot of good results from this right here. Amen? So if you want to have a personal one-on-one -on -one time, that's what they're here for. God bless you. Tonight we'll have service again. And... Um, we'll be back out at our power at 6 o'clock. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to be here this morning. And now, Lord, I thank you that each and every person, as they go their way, Lord, they are healed, they are delivered, and they are set free. And, Father, I thank you that we can walk out this victory. We don't have to be afraid. Father, just as we started off with this morning, fear is a liar. The Word of God is the truth. And we're going to keep our minds fixed on your word and your truth. And that's going to keep our minds healthy and refreshed. And I thank you, Lord, for just protecting them, keeping them safe, watching over their children. I thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.